This week we have a new moon solar eclipse in the partnership sign of Libra. All of this, an empowered moment and more in my new intuitive energy forecast for the week of Monday, September 30th through Sunday, October 6th, 2024. Stay tuned. This is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from Sacred Soul Empowerment, here with your weekly energy forecast. For this week, we'll be using the Tarot of Dreams by Ciro Marchetti. That will be the main message for everyone. Your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, will be coming from the Gateway of Light Activation Deck by Kyle Gray. So before we get into our stones of choice or the astrology for the week, let's go ahead, close our eyes, relax, and tune in, and do an empowered moment. So if you can, put your feet flat on the floor. If not, just imagine that you're connected with Earth Mother Gaia through the soles of your feet. Sit up straight and yet relax your body, clear your mind, Clear your heart of all that has been going on over the past few weeks. And let's focus on beautiful, gentle, compassionate golden white light. The golden white light of God's source energy universe, unconditional love, compassion, forgiveness, guidance, protection, and healing that golden white light and they're showing it vacillating between this ethereal golden white light and a beautiful pastel pink light one of the colors of the heart chakra is all around you enveloping you in this beautiful gentle healing energy and taking a deep breath and imagine you're breathing in that golden white and or pink light into every cell of your body. And as you exhale, letting go of all that your body, mind and soul and heart no longer needs to hold on to. And silently calling in your angels, guides, master guides and teachers of the highest vibration of light, asking for healing of the heart, healing of the soul, and even healing of the mind. We have a new moon solar eclipse in the relationship sign of Libra. But above and beyond our relationship with others is the relationship with ourselves. So hold the intention in your heart that you're developing a stronger connection with your inner self, that you're balancing the divine feminine and the divine masculine within yourself that you have compassion and forgiveness for yourself, that you direct this unconditional love towards yourself. Hold those intentions strongly in your heart and as you do, take in a deep breath, breathing in that self-love Breathing in that compassion and forgiveness and healing for self. Breathing in the balance of the feminine and masculine within self. Calling in your higher soul self and asking for a stronger connection with the truth of who you are, with your divinity, with your sacredness. 
and visualizing the heart chakra opening, opening to another layer of self. Taking in a deep breath, holding all of those intentions, exhaling, breathing them out into the universe where they can all be made manifest. And as you take one last deep healing, cleansing, balancing breath and exhale, you can slowly open your eyes and return to this time and place and space. So let's go ahead and take a look at our stones of choice. So we are having a new moon solar eclipse in the relationship sign of Libra. And I am a Libra, so I always think of the color pink, and I should have wore pink today. I thought about it. I thought about changing, actually, but I didn't. And we have all pink stones today. And all three of these pink stones have similar qualities, so I want you to go on what feels right to you or when I show them to you which one just really kind of stands out and there might be a, a key word for each one that's a little bit different so just go with your intuition and this first one is rose quartz and I chose bracelets today so we've got a rose quartz bracelet here this one has a nice little heart on it and the rose quartz I'm going to give you keywords for all of them love beauty, compassion, forgiveness, self-love, peace, calm, and emotional healing. And that's your rose quartz. The second stone of choice is, let's hold it up the right way here. This one is pink mother of pearl. So the pink mother of pearl, this one has a little ohm symbol on it. And the pink mother of pearl keywords are love, kindness, generosity, compassion, loyalty, happiness, romance, and good health. And then our last stone of choice is rhodochrosite. This one does not have any little thingies on it, but <laughs> rhodochrosite. And it's just this very beautiful kind of darker pink. And the keywords for the rhodochrosite is compassion, love, comfort, happiness, passion, empathy, forgiveness, and self-love. So again, your stones of choice are the rose quartz, the, I always want to have that backwards as far as the little thing hanging down there, the um, mother of pearl, the pink mother of pearl, and the rhodochrosite. Okay, let's put those aside. Let's talk about the astrology for the week. There's quite a fair amount of things going on. And in the middle of the week is that new moon solar eclipse. But on Monday, September 30th, this is the last day of September. And on that day, we have Mars, the planet of energy, action, forward movement. He's the warrior, but he's in water sign cancer. So his normal fiery, passionate nature is being watered down a little bit by being in cancer. But he's directing and funneling his energy and action energies towards home and family, emotions, emotional healing, feelings, uh, em empathy, caretaking, all those things that cancer rules. And yes, even intuition, it's more like the clear sentience, the gut feelings that we get. And Mars and Cancer on Monday is in a positive trine to Saturn in Pisces, another water sign. And Saturn is the planet of um, karma and limitation and restriction, but this is a positive connection. So let's look at the positive um, ideas of Saturn. We've got form, we've got structure, restructuring, manifestation, authority, responsibility, 
And so with Mars and Cancer connecting in a positive way to Saturn and Pisces, perhaps there's a restructuring of home, family, living situation on some level. So maybe kids are moving out, maybe someone's moving in, you know, maybe the house is getting a redo, maybe you're selling your home to buy a new home. So there's all these things that are going on maybe within that realm of home and family, but also in the realm of spirituality and intuition. Um, again, caretaking, love, all of these things are ruled by the water sign. And this is a restructuring process and bringing things into more of a grounded focus, into a into form and into manifestation. So this is boding well for those of you that maybe are making changes in some of these different areas of life. Also on Monday the 30th, the sun in Libra is connecting with Mercury in Libra. Now the sun rules our vitality, our ego, our self-expression, how we shine our light. We're shining our light through this lens of partnership and relationship, but that also includes our relationship with ourself, right? The scales of justice, Libra. It can be the balance of us and another friend or romantic interest or family member, even the balance between us and our work relationships on some level. But this is also, again, the balance within ourselves. Libra needs that balance and harmony within themselves. It's connecting again with Mercury, which rules the mental realm, our thoughts, our ideas, our perceptions, our perspectives, um, our communications with other people. So communication is definitely highlighted with other people um, at this time at the beginning of the week. Well, probably all week, really, for that matter. Um, but it's especially a day where you should pay attention to communications, messages, networking, especially one-on-one -on -one networking, because that's what Libra um, is good at, is that one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's also about our thoughts and perceptions and perspectives about relationships, and are they balanced, and are they, uh, is there equal give and take? Is there equality here? Um, are we compromising, are, are we cooperating, or is something out of balance? So those are things that are thoughts in our head as well, um, different things with our perceptions that we're moving through, or again, things that we're communicating about. On Wednesday, the 2nd of October, this is when we have that new moon solar eclipse. It's at 10 degrees of Libra. New moons are about new beginnings, planting new seeds, fresh starts. Libra, of course, partnership, relationship, the scales of justice. I always think of the kind of the karmic scales of justice, maybe even with Libra and uh, harmony, peace, or peacemaking, um, and again, that relationship with ourself as well. That new moon solar eclipse is activating something new. This is following up on that full moon lunar eclipse that we had in Pisces two weeks ago. So that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces, um, even before that happened, we were in this portal of these eclipses, but we're really in this time of, again, endings and new beginnings. The full moon endings, completion of a phase, completion of an energy or situation or mindset or a belief system. And now the new moon solar eclipse, we're activating something new. And Libra is an air sign. And those air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, they do rule the mind and they rule our thoughts and they rule our perspectives and they rule how we communicate with other people. So maybe this is activating a new way of sharing yourself with another, a new way to be in relationship, a new way to communicate in relationship, a new way to look at your role in the relationship or you know, changing or shifting your perspectives and releasing and letting go from that previous full moon lunar eclipse, old patterns, old stories, old ways of operating within all of your relationships and even the relationship with yourself. And now we're activating a new way. On Thursday, the 3rd of October, Mercury, the ruler of the mental realm in Libra, the sign of partnerships, is in an inconjunct aspect to Saturn and Pisces. Now, the inconjunct is a difficult kind of aspect. Uh, we have to adjust something. We have to make some adjustments for it to work properly. So apparently we're needing to adjust our mindset, how we communicate, our thought processes, our perspectives about something. And again, Saturn rules kind of karmic lessons, old things that we're trying to clear out of our energy bodies and our systems. 
And this can relate to some past life uh, circumstances as well. So I feel like we maybe are adjusting how we're interacting with other people. Like we might have to make that effort like, oh, this isn't my norm, but I'm really going to make the effort to try this in a new way, communicate in a new way or be in this relationship in a new way or express myself in a new way. And it feels a little foreign and uncomfortable, but you know, maybe this is what we're needing to do to be able to clear out some of those old stories and old patterns. And then on October 4th, Friday, we've got Venus in Scorpio. Now, Venus rules love and relationships. She also rules money and finances, especially in Scorpio, because Scorpio is one of the money signs of the zodiac. Um, and she is in a positive connection with Saturn, again, Saturn and Pisces. So this is a positive connection. So Venus and Scorpio, I mean, she's the divine, she's part of the divine feminine, right? She's She's that feminine planet or one of them. And Venus is, again, relationships and finances, resources. And in that sign of Scorpio, it's about empowerment. So in relationships, I feel like she's empowering herself and kind of grounding in, standing her ground with that trying to Saturn. In money matters, this could manifest something. This could bring a manifestation of something in a positive way because this is a positive connection. We're again clearing out old stories and this is a positive connection. So we can kind of restructure, restructure um, energies of relationships and how we operate in them and restructure our patterns within our resources, including money and finances and kind of ground in uh, a new and better way. On Saturday, the 5th of October, we're back to Mercury, planet of the mind, thoughts, ideas, communications in Libra. And it's now in a challenging connection to Mars and Cancer. Remember, Mars started out the week. So Mars is the warrior, energy, action, forward movement. It's in the sign of home and family. It's in the sign of our feelings and emotions. Sometimes Mars and Cancer can get a little impatient and frustrated with feelings and emotions because that's not what the warrior is used to. And this is a challenging connection with Mercury. So this could bring about some misunderstandings with communication. Even beyond that, it can bring some aggression or some frustration, some difficulties in communication. Uh, challenges in communication. And some of this communication might be with significant romantic partners because that's where Mercury is in Libra. Some of these communications might be with family members because that's where Mars is and Cancer. Um, but either way, we want to just be aware of how we're presenting ourselves. You know, maybe take a moment and think before you speak, so to, so to, so to say, so to speak. <laughs> and, you know, just really make sure we're not choosing words to put the other person on the defense. You know, that, that it, what we're going to speak isn't going to hurt the other person's feelings. We want to be truthful. You know, there might be moments of needing to be clear and set boundaries and being truthful and speaking truth. But if... If we can be in our in our hearts, right? Because Libra ultimately wants to keep the peace and not rock the boat, but sometimes it goes a little far by not saying anything. Cancer, where Mars is, is really being loving and caring and and, and empathic and empathetic and, and things like that. So they don't want to hurt other people's feelings either. Um, so just be careful that it doesn't come out before you kind of think. And then on Sunday, the 6th of October, we've got the Sun in Libra, and it, it's in an in conjunct to Saturn in Pisces. So again, the Sun is our self-expression, who we are. It's in the sign of relationships and partnerships, so that's highlighted. And now it's in this challenging or difficult uh, in conjunct to Saturn where we need to make some adjustments. Again, old stories, old patterns, clearing the karma, um, not being controlling. Saturn sometimes in its shadow side can be uh, overly authoritative, overly demanding, overly controlling, want things a certain way. It's a little patriarchal sometimes. So, you know, all in all, we need, need to make those adjustments and try to 
cooperate, right? Libra is about cooperation, compromise, and being loving and peaceful with one another, okay? So don't go as far as getting into the codependency of Libra or the peacemaking and not speaking your truth of Libra, but yet in all, we want to make sure that things seem fair. You know, Libra likes fairness and justice. So a couple things just to kind of wrap this up is I noticed that Mars is in water sign Cancer, right? At the beginning of the week, it trines Saturn in water sign Pisces. And then later on Friday, Venus is in water sign Scorpio, trining Saturn in water sign Pisces. So those are the three water signs and it's making what's called a grand trine. It's like a triangle because you got planets in each of the water signs and they're all in this flowing and harmonious energy, which is good. Mars and Venus are the lovers with Venus ruling kind of the feminine archetype and uh, Mars is ruling the masculine archetype. And then we've got Saturn over here connecting to both of them in a positive way. And so maybe this is again, a restructuring process of our own masculine and feminine. And maybe it's a restructuring process in the way we're operating in relationship and looking at the old roles of the feminine and the masculine and maybe what the new roles are morphing into, right? Because we're all evolving and relationships are not, um, what do I want to say? They're not playing out in the same way. We're not in the same roles as we used to be because we're evolving. And so women have to look at, you know, well, whether no matter what kind of relationship it is, woman to woman, man to woman, man to man, we're all needing to look at how our roles are shifting or how relationships are evolving. And that's what I think that grand trine in water is about. The other thing I noticed is that Saturn is highlighted a lot during this week, right? We start out on Monday with Mars connecting to Saturn, and then on Thursday, Mercury is connecting to Saturn, and then on Friday, Venus is connecting to Saturn, and then on Sunday, the Sun is connecting to Saturn. So there's a lot of um, looking at old karmic lessons, <clears throat> challenges, old stories, restructuring, um, and you know, bringing something new, new energies being brought into form, especially because of this new moon solar eclipse. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides. Okay, so the first card that comes out is the Two of Cups. So not a big surprise, you know, there's a lot, I mean, we're in Libra season. We have a solar eclipse in Libra. It's all about relationships, partnerships of various kinds, <coughs> friendship, lovers, family, excuse me. <coughs> Should have gotten my water. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we have the two swans facing each other, they're mirroring each other, they're balanced with each other, and that's what Libra is all about. It's about balance and harmony and peace and equality, and in relationships, we do mirror back and forth um, our shadow sides. That's how we're growing and evolving as souls, by playing these parts out with other people in our lives. We do have Venus up here. This is the the icon for Venus in Cancer. So this is the Divine Feminine. This is home and family. Now it doesn't necessarily just mean biological family. This can be those friends that are in our lives that feel like family. This can be our spiritual family. You know, this can be our lovers that are family, our children that are family. And I feel like this is what we're aspiring towards. We're aspiring towards this balance of Libra, this harmony, this peace, this equality, this cooperation with one another. And, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the new moon solar eclipse in Libra is, is activating this higher energy even more for all of us on the planet. It doesn't happen overnight. We gotta you know, put forth a little bit of effort. We have to work at it but I feel like this is activating this beautiful, wonderful, unconditionally loving Two of Cups energy. But again, there might be some, there might be a, a special connection to a home and family matters in some way here. Let's look at card number two. 
Okay, we've got another Cups card. This is the Seven of Cups. This one has Venus as well, but it's Venus and Scorpio. So this is about that divine feminine owning her power. It's interesting because Venus is in Scorpio right now. Remember on Friday, Venus and Scorpio trying Saturn and Pisces. Um, and even though this one had Venus and Cancer, it's actually Mars and Cancer this week. So we've got those water signs popping up. But this one has a little bit of a different feel than the Two of Cups, right? The Two of Cups is balance and cooperation. Well, Seven of Cups is a little bit about confusion. Um, you know, there's a little bit like there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on mentally, emotionally, uh, some confusion. We don't know what choices to make, what decisions to make. <clears throat> this is indicated by all the different cups here having different things within them. We've got a snake in one cup. We've got keys, it looks like, in another cup. Um, I think this is a beetle or a scorpion, actually. Scorpio the scorpion in this cup, which is like the, the stinger, the, the manipulation and the sarcasm, right? We've got, um, I don't even know what these other cups are holding. Wings, we've got angel wings in one cup, but they're all, they all have something different. It's almost like, what part am I playing, right? Like I wanna be maybe sarcastic in this moment and, and say something very blunt and truthful and to the point, but the maybe the angel wings, you know, maybe I, I need to kind of temper that a little bit and be more in this unconditional love and seeing the other person as a soul. But this can also be about needing to make a decision in a relationship matter. Again, it doesn't just mean romantic. Can be any kind of relationship where we're just confused and we're not sure what choice to make which road to follow which direction to go you know what decision to make so there might be a pause here or the need for a pause especially because we have an eclipse when we have eclipses like we just had the full moon lunar eclipse and now this week the new moon solar eclipse it can indicate that we need to pause for a minute until the energies settle like the eclipses shake things up a little bit because it's like the universe saying, okay, it's time to take a big step in evolution and growth. And we're all shaken up. And until the, the, until the energies settle a little bit and ground a little bit, it might not be the best time to try to make that decision or try to make that choice. Um, because right now we're just going to be a little confused by it all. I keep getting drawn to the snake though. And whenever I think of Scorpio, I think of the snake of transformation. And here we have this snake, death and rebirth, transformation, regeneration, change, transition. So I feel like there's some transitioning going on um, in all of our relationships. And it's time to, if you've been disempowered, whether again, work, family, friend, romantic, if you've been disempowered in a relationship situation, the Divine Feminine is ready to, to transform herself and take her power back. Now, it doesn't mean we be mean or aggressive. Maybe we be assertive. Maybe we speak our truth. Maybe we be direct. Maybe we set good boundaries. But again, it doesn't mean that we have to pull out the, the shadow side of that Scorpio energy, right? And be, you know, manipulative or mean or angry or you know sometimes Scorpio can be a little emotionally abusive um, so just rise into the Phoenix energy of the Scorpio energy and just feel empowered and be empowered in yourself and maybe again holding off and making um, any big decisions that might impact your life for a long time to come okay and let's look at the next card <clears throat> Aha, so we've got Major Arcana 11, the Justice card. There's Libra, the Scales of Balance, the Karmic Scales of Balance. And that's what rules the Justice card. So it's really interesting how we've got two Venus cards, which is about relationships. We've got Justice, which is ruled by Libra, and the ruling planet of Libra is Venus. So Venus is really showing up a lot here. You know, this Libra energy is prominent for this week with this solar eclipse. And again, I feel like the karmic scales are balancing old stories, old karma, old challenges, past life stuff is being moved on out. And that again is 
partly a result of that full moon lunar eclipse that we already had. And now we've got this solar eclipse activating something new for all of us. And remember that eclipse energies aren't just at the time when the eclipse occurs. Eclipse energies, full moon, new moon, last for weeks to come. A lot of astrologers say it will last until the next set of eclipses, which aren't going to be until next year. So we've got a lot of endings and new beginnings, a lot of transitioning, a lot of karmic balancing that is, has already, and will still be coming up in our lives right now. And a lot of it could be within relationship matters of all kinds. It could also be, again, within the relationship to yourself. Um, are you balanced within yourself? Are you empowered within yourself? Are you holding yourself responsible for the parts that you've played in any situations or relationships? Um, that's kind of part of the justice card too. It's like being responsible, taking responsibility for the part that you play and not judging yourself for it, right? This isn't about judging yourself. This is about seeing and being aware and releasing old stories and activating something new, something fresh, activating a new part of yourself where energies are going to be more peaceful, calm, and balanced. And there was a card that actually flew out of the deck when I just picked it up to start shuffling it in the beginning. So it came out first, but Spirit told me to talk about it last or show it last. And it's the Palace of Cups. And this particular tarot deck has four extra cards. And those four extra cards are called the Palace Cards. Palace of Cups, Palace of Wands, Palace of Swords, Palace of Pentacles. And this makes sense too, because the cups is emotions and feelings. And when we think about love and relationships, we're in emotions and feelings, right? This is about, you know, inner feelings of joy and happiness and peace and uh, fulfillment and, you know, all of these things that our feelings can provide for us. When I see a palace card, it always makes me feel of the ultimate benefits of what that suit is about. So this is about attaining the ultimate benefits regarding our feelings and our emotions and our intuitions, our intuitive capabilities, our empathy, our compassion, our sense of forgiveness. All of those things would be in the realm of cups. So with that new moon solar eclipse, I feel like it's activating us towards this idea of reaching this ultimate fulfillment in how we want to feel in our lives and how we want to feel about ourselves, within ourselves. So keep this in mind when we're moving through this new moon solar eclipse energy. And, you know, keep in mind, how do I want to feel? Even if I don't know what decision or choice to make right now, how do I want to feel long term? Do I want to feel secure? Do I want to feel stable? Do I want to feel happy? Do I want to feel joyous? Do I want to feel in love and loved as well? And so maybe write down some of those emotions and feelings that you want to feel as you move forward and then compare it to the situation and what's going on. And later on, when the dust settles, when the energies settle a little bit, you can say, is the current situation allowing me to feel peaceful, calm, serene, and in love with life and in love with myself? And if the current situation is not, and if the other people involved in these relationships or situations, if it's not shifting and changing with the eclipse energies, and give it time. It doesn't have to be a hurried thing. You know, depending on where you're at and what the situation is, can be some weeks down the road, maybe even some months down the road. But ultimately, remember how you want to feel, because that's what we're that's what we're going for. All right, so we're well into this uh, minute wise. So let's go ahead and see what our message from the angels and guides are, depending on your stone of choice. So the first bracelet of choice was the rose quartz. So Rose Quartz people, special message for this week, maybe even beyond this week, for this Rose Rose Quartz people for this eclipse energy. This one's calling my attention. I can get it out of there. 
I am presence. I pulled this card earlier, I think, today when I was doing a reading for somebody. I am presence, and it says light body activation. See, this eclipse is activating your light body. It's activating the higher essence of who you are as a soul. You can see all this beautiful golden white light being activated by this eclipse. And it says accessing the divine within. So again, let this activation take place with this eclipse. Let the dust of the energy settle a little bit, right? You have to... Um, you know, when you're getting downloads and when, you, when you're getting activations and you're receiving like uh, messages from the divine or from the higher realms, your energy bodies are shifting, you need to just kind of go with it a little bit. You need to sit with it a little bit and allow it to kind of integrate a little bit um, before you can move forward. But this is positive. This is like angelic white light activation. You can even see like the shape of an angel here, the wings kind of coming up on both sides, um, kind of the head, the halo here. Um, and this is uh, really moving you to a higher state and sense of security within your own light body and with your angels and guides and with the higher vibration of light overall. All right, let's put that back in the deck in case somebody else gets it. And the second stone of choice was the Pink Mother of Pearl. So message for the Pink Mother of Pearl, people. Ooh, okay. Well, I guess two cards came out when they dropped. So let me just focus on which one. Are we going with the left or the right? Okay. And this is the Sword of Light. The Sword of Light. And it says Divine Protection. Cords are cut and breakthrough energy. So this is, to me, it feels like Archangel Michael with this sword of light, right? So cords are being cut to the past, cords are being cut maybe in relationships, cords are being cut to situations, cords are being cut to old emotions, mindsets, stories, karma, etc. all across the board. Um, and, you know, it looks like like an ace of swords, right? If we looked at the tarot card for the ace of swords, this is sort of what it looks like, you know, one sword that's that's there standing. Sometimes it might be more of a, an upright sword. But this to me is like new beginnings in a way of thinking, perceiving, um, new perspectives, aha moments, revelations, new way to communicate and new com communications coming to you. Maybe some of those communications are from other people, but maybe some of those communications are from spirit, from the divine. We've got the sword on fire, passionate, creative, spiritual energy that's being activated. So again, the first phrase, divine protection. You're highly protected and guided in this time. You're guided to the right decisions to make and in the right timing. You're protected from lower vibrational energies. And again, those old karmic stories, those cords are being cut and you're getting ready to move into this beautiful, bright and empowered yellow, orange, you know, all this wonderful light energy from this sword that's happening. You're having lots of breakthroughs right now. So this is a wonderful, wonderful message. And then the last stone of choice was the rhodochrosite. So special message for this week for the rhodochrosite people. And this one's calling my attention right here. Isn't that interesting? Venetian Galactic Council. Venetian meaning the planet Venus. And boy, she's been kind of highlighted today um, in those previous tarot cards, especially. And it says at the bottom, star being guides. So you've got some star brothers and sisters of the light that are guides for you right now, especially from maybe <clears throat> the Venetian kind of uh, planet, if you will, or the Venetian, what do I want to say, uh, energy space. And then it says, answer the call. So Venus, the ruler of the feminine archetype, wants you to answer the call to your divine feminine energies, maybe answer the call to empowerment energies, um, and it says time to shine. So we've got three beautiful Venetian light beings here shining their etheric white light in a golden yellow background with some of that pink energy that I talked about here with all those 
pink stones that we showed you, which is unconditional love and compassion and forgiveness. So you're really moving into the Venetian kind of qualities. This could bring in new relationships, soulmate relationships that are friends, uh, family, like you know, spiritual family also could be a romantic relationship that's coming in with that Venus energy coming in. Um, but definitely, you know, the further messages are to answer the call of your soul. Where is your soul leading you next? Where is your soul guiding you? Right? Where are your guides and angels, your higher soul self calling you to move towards? So these are things that you want to pay attention to and be in the heart space, be in this lovely pink unconditionally loving heart chakra energy because that's where the healing takes place that's where the magic takes place so this is a beautiful card as well i hope you all have a beautiful wonderful powerful in a positive way solar eclipse energy activation sending you all lots of love and light and many many blessings namaste everyone